So let's go ahead and put some numbers on these two examples, and let's, let's look at the type of problems that you might be asked to investigate based on the concept of centripetal acceleration being caused by the tension or being caused by the frictional force. So for the mass on the left, let's say that this mass is a 2.0 kilogram mass. is being swung in a circle with a, let's go ahead and make this string, let's make this string 30 centimeters. With a 30 centimeter string on a frictionless horizontal table at 4 meters per second. And the question is determine So I'd like to determine the tension in the string. So let's pull out everything that was given to us in this problem. We can see that we were given the mass. We were given the radius of its motion. I'm going to go ahead and convert that right now. 0 0.30 meters. And I see that I have the velocity. So clearly I'll be using the V squared over R equation. 4.0 meters per second. Okay, so now we need to return back to our old set of equations, and that is that we simply identify the total force. Sorry, let me rephrase that. The net force is the mass times the acceleration. And in this case, there's only one force, the tension. We're on a frictionless surface. I'm purposely putting this object on a horizontal surface because I don't want to deal with multiple, multiple forces. Of course, gravity always points down. We will look at those examples. It's a little more complicated, though. It brings in extra forces that act on it. And at this point, I want to keep it simple on a horizontal table, no friction on the table. So therefore, there's only one force acting on it, and that is the tension, which, as we have established, is pointing inward towards the center of the circle, providing the centripetal acceleration. So in this case, this expression will come out to be m v squared over r is equal to t, and I need to simply plug in these values. So t is equal to 2.0 times 4.0 squared divided by 0 0.30, and this will produce a tension of 107 newtons. Okay, now that's a, that's a pretty straightforward problem. Let's go ahead and move back to the, I think, the more interesting example, the car going around the road. Let's make this problem a little more interesting. Let's not just look for the frictional force. I'll actually give you the frictional force. Let's look for something more interesting. <clears throat> what we frequently would like to know is, if we know what the frictional force between the car's tires and the road is, <clears throat> excuse me, how fast can I go around the turn and not slide off? So let's take a look at this example. Let's make the car 1,200 kilograms. That's a typical value for a car. It's traveling around a curve of radius 50 meters. And let's say if the maximum frictional force
So we have a 1200 kilogram car traveling around a curve with a radius of 50 meters and the frictional force between the tires and the road has a maximum value of 3,500 newtons, then what is the maximum speed the car can travel without slipping off the road? So let's take a look at what we're given again. We have the mass is 1,200 kilograms. We know we have a radius of 50 meters. And we have a maximum frictional force of 3,500 Newtons. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and set up our equation for the net force acting on the vehicle. And in this case, we're only interested in the inward direction. We're not changing the speed. So since the speed is not changing in the tangential direction, what that essentially means is that whatever the thrust force is, it's matched exactly by the frictional force. There's nothing interesting there. It was the same thing over here. Whatever force might be pointing in the forward direction is exactly matched by the force in the backwards direction. So the object does not speed up forward or backwards. Same with the car. It does not speed up or slow down in terms of the magnitude of its velocity. It simply changes its direction. So we're only interested in those forces which either point into the center of the circle or which point out from the center of the circle. Now in this case, there's only one, and that is the frictional force. So since we're dealing with the centripetal acceleration, we'll replace this equation with V squared over R for AC. That's equal to F of F. Sorry. And now let's solve for V for V squared. So first thing I would do is I would multiply by R. So that's MV squared equal to R times F of F. Then I would divide by the mass it's going to move the mass over to the other side divided by M. At this point I would plug in numbers. This is 50 times 3500 divided by 12. So that gives me a V squared value equal to 145.8 and then I square root everything here and that gives me a value maximum speed of 12.1 meters per second. This, this is the upshot of the whole thing. If the radius of the curve is not turning, and of course we're on a fixed, we're on a curve of a fixed radius. If the radius does not change and the mass does not change, then the only thing that can really change is the velocity of the vehicle. Now as the velocity of the vehicle increases, that means that it would require us to have a greater frictional force pointing in. But in this case, the frictional force cannot exceed 3,500 newtons. So this means that if this velocity exceeds 12.1 meters per second, then this value over here will be greater than 3,500 newtons, and there will be an, ex an, an inadequate amount of force And so with that inadequate amount of frictional force, the car will be left with only one choice. The car will begin to slide outward, increasing the radius of the turn. And as we increase the radius of the turn, it will reduce the value of the force until it gets back down to that maximum possible value of 3,500 newtons. So this is what cars do when they go around a turn that's too sharp. The car slides out. It increases the value of its radius as it increases the value of the radius, that reduces the amount of the force that's necessary to make the turn. This is to say that a car that makes a very sharp turn requires a much greater force than a car that makes a very gentle turn. That should sort of make sense. So as the car slides out, the radius increases, the force required to make the car make the turn then is less, and it no longer exceeds the frictional force, and the car can successfully navigate the turn. So we found that 12.1 meters per second is the fastest speed this car can go around this turn before it will begin to slide because there is simply not enough friction to make the car turn at that rate.